Hi, it's me, Ingrid IFP. And uh, this is part three of me trying to get rid of get rid of my collage wall. Um, now some of you might have seen when I was putting up this wall. Uh, so this is kind of the same part um, that I last put up. And so they were last to come down. Um, Oh, I got this one from the Brain, yeah, and Fondam, the Brain uh, Association. It's just like potpourri of plants. Okay. Uh, so today was, yesterday was not a good uh, evening or day. I basically took two naps. And then I couldn't sleep until like one in the morning because of that. And I did not feel too good. I don't know if it's my time of the month or whatever, but something is not too good. I think that it's the anxiety of moving that takes me down. And today I had to say no to my driving lesson um, with my colleague. We were supposed to start driving again today, but I, I felt like I was about to cry. Um, and I feel so disappointed in myself for not being able to get to do stuff. And like only being able to do stuff that makes me happy. And I can't do stuff that makes me unhappy. And it's not because I'm lazy, but it, it, uh, it feels quite, it feels like I'm lazy because it's like, if I could, I would, but I, I just, I can't, I don't have the mental capacity. And I knew that I would start crying if I went to do the car right now. Um, so yeah. That's not what I'm going to be doing. Um, I need to manage my move and that's the most important because if I don't put the things in the boxes and everything, then I will end up on the street uh, and I will have to pay a hefty fee for everything. Uh, and also I need to rest. I just I feel really tired. I felt really tired after my party with Italians. I felt, yeah, like empty of energy. And it really reminds me that yes, I, I am an introvert. I, I didn't need that reminder, but uh, yes, um, I definitely need a lot of time to relax after a social event. Oh, this is an aurora. I've never seen an aurora nor lights. One day. Yeah, so I don't know, I've been feeling pretty rotten. Last night I was like, I did, I couldn't do anything, so I ended up uh, finding Sherlock, which I haven't watched in years. I used to be a big uh, Sherlock fan and really be a John Locke shipper. <laughs> um, but then the whole series went to shit. Series 4 was terrible. I'll, I'll make a video someday about that. I'm still traumatized about this. Um, as were most people in that fandom. Um, but so I have a lot of... So first I went and watched the first episode of Sherlock, season one, episode one from 2010. Uh, and you know, just getting all the nostalgia and, and I know what he's going to about to say and I, I feel kind of at peace uh, when I watch it. But then I started getting too much of that nostalgia feel and then um, I got sad, you know? Because at that time of my life I was sad. And so yeah, I got pretty sad. And then I felt like I couldn't watch the whole, <laughs> the whole uh, 
series of Sherlock. Um, but I couldn't do anything else but to watch. And then I started reading some fan fiction. Oh, these are statues from Miles Gordon, which is in uh, Stockholm. Um, yeah, so I, I started crying and just like curling up into a ball in bed and I wasn't doing well. And uh, yeah. I don't know, it feels like all the energy has fallen out of my body or something. And and so yeah, that's why I had to say no to my garden today. And I, I, I'm not only letting myself down, I'm also letting my colleague down who was so excited. And also there was another colleague that we were going to borrow his car because he has an automatic car and so I had to like bum out their, like their entire plans and that made me feel awful and then I started crying a little bit right before I was going to go to the changing room at work before leaving because it was just yeah I don't know I just don't feel that great right now Okay, this one is some kind of like light academia. <laughs> I like dark academia and college core. I don't like the political kind of college core or whatever. It's not like I dream of being in the countryside. You know, there are a lot of people who do and I respect that. But I know that I would never be able to deal with all of those things that come with living on the farm, like the smells and the having to take care of these animals um, and being away from everything. Like I, I like peace and quiet, but it's enough for me to be in like a quiet part of a small town. I don't need to be really in the middle of nowhere. And having to interact with like farmers, um, not my thing. And my resident colleague, she got a boyfriend who um, he's like basically a farmer. Um, and she's around my age, but she's like really interested in farming. And so, I mean, I guess that they will be happy together. Um, but for me, like my life is basically like, oh, this is like the um, tortoise and the hare. I got that from a science magazine actually because it was like about the physiology of like being quick or being slow I guess or like running fast or being slow um, oh here are some foods oh no this is like some kind of pizza or something hmm. I just found out that my Italian friend does not like pecorino on pizza which was new for me. So now I have something to laugh, laugh at him about. Uh, I'm not going to make fun of him for that. Uh, I had a very nice patients uh, who remember me from like 2021 or 2022. Um, so it's like, I can't have everything. <laughs> Um, I can't have both nice patients and feel good, I guess. Um, because I want to do good, you know? But like, when I do good, then the patients are bad. I'm like, oh. Yeah. I've, I've been watching uh, Dee's video over on FP Insights. Um, but uh, yeah, sorry, I'm rubbing my nose quite a lot. Um, it's it's not because my nose is runny, but I feel like I'm uh, like scratchy in my nose, and I think this is my new allergy or something. Um, 
there was a, a guy, a patient who had, he had really strong perfume and I started like, my eyes started watering and I started coughing and he was like, uh, do you want some water? And I was like, oh, okay, I'll, I'll go get some water. Like this poor patient felt uh, sorry for me. Like he was like, please go and get some water. But he didn't know that it was him. But it was his fault that I was coughing like this. I'm usually not very sensitive to perfumes and such, but his perfume had to contain something really weird. Because then I left the room and then I started feeling better. So it was definitely in my room, you know? And I don't know if it was his perfume or somebody else's, but it did coincide with when he was in the room and he did have perfume. So, yeah. I didn't have to deal with that on top of everything else, did I? Yeah. This is kind of fun. It's like an AI, AI girl. There's a European Union flag on the back, and I have to I have to vote in the elections. I've never voted in the European elections for some reason. I guess that it's because it's always like the time that I move from one place to another is in June. Maybe that's why. But so yeah, it would be the first time that I'm voting in the European elections. Do you know the European Union? Oh, I feel hot and terrible. <laughs> oh. So sorry guys about my lack of energy and uh, excitement. Um, I'm really just making this video so I can like, get this done before I turn to working on other things. Tomorrow I have to also do my, um, I have to present my plan for the year to my boss and that is pretty stressful. So I'm trying not to think about it too much and like do, do the plan at the last minute because it, it just stresses me out to work on it more than actually doing the thing at the last minute. Oof. Oh, that's kind of nice. It's like flowers coming out of a book. Okay guys, I think that I'll need a break, so I'm going to pause the video, I think, and then start it again, because I'm not even halfway through what I was supposed to be doing. Um, okay, right, sorry guys, I ate some uh, pasta and some chocolate, and I feel a little bit better. Um, so let's keep going. Um, I mean, you guys have no idea what the John Locke fandom was. Um, it's BBC Sherlock, and John Locke is basically people shipping um, Sherlock Holmes with John Watson, which was pretty controversial at the time because, well, there weren't, wasn't a lot of LGBTQ representation back when the first the show first aired in 2010. I got into the fandom in 2014 when I started medical school, and that's when I found out that I was gay. So, well, it's through the show that I found out that I was gay. Oh no. So, that's a burden. Um, 
So um, I, I really am grateful for that. And now I'm finding out that, oh, I mean, Sherlock is coded autistic, right? And um, um, he does stuff that is relatable. Um, when I first started watching the show, I really related to John Watson because he was a doctor, right? And he was loyal and stable. But the more I watched the show, the more I realized that actually I'm much more like Sherlock and that I am uh, pretty spontaneous and unpredictable and unconventional. And uh, you know, I seem much more stoic than I thought I was, uh, to be honest. Um, I thought that, you know, people thought of me as like a very warm person, but I think that uh, it depends, kind of, on the person. Um, but yeah, so I have an unconventional way of thinking, and so that is, and basically, because uh, Sherlock is like kind of INTP coded in BBC Sherlock, Unless he's ISTP, but I think the way that he explains things is pretty any. Um, even though he does a lot of observation, which you know you would, might see picking up on those details as SE and Sherlock's impulsiveness as SE, I think that uh, Sherlock and BBC Sherlock is an INTP, or supposed to be at least, you know, it's hard to type characters in fiction. Um, and John Watson is supposed to be an ISFJ. And I kind of see the dynamic between me as an INFP and my best friend who's an ISFJ in this. And I don't know, I felt really touched by my best friend turning 30 at, at his birthday party and the fact that we've been friends for 10 years and the fact that he he would keep reminding everybody that we've been friends for 10 years and like he was so proud of of us and I'm really happy about you know I'm proud of that too of what we have and it's it's beautiful and um, even though we don't really understand each other we kind of have that thing um, that is d d difficult to find, you know, the chemistry works in terms of a friendship chemistry, if you could call it that. Oh, this is a picture of like trolls, pretty famous picture, I forget what it's called. Uh, anyway, here's a baguette. So, yeah, so now I realize that, oh, I, that show is so important to me because it's made me realize so many things about me. It's made me realize that, made me realize that I'm gay and it's made me realize that I'm uh, autistic. I mean, it wasn't because of the show that I realized I was autistic, but now it's kind of like, a, it's kind of like confirms it or makes me feel nice about it, you know? There is a lot of autistic representation that is good. <laughs> and you could argue that Sherlock is not great representation either because he's a white male um, with like savant syndrome or whatever. But in BBC Sherlock, like he has, you can see that he has a lot of compassion for uh, the underdogs and he is uh, very attentive to like John Watson and he, he uses his powers for good, you know, even though he might be a little bit brash and uh, blunt, he's doing it because he wants to help people and getting over the wishy-washy small talk stuff. Um, so yeah, that, that series has been really important to me and it's kind of a comfort show that I 
watch whenever things are difficult. It's been a while now that I've turned back to the show because I feel like if I watch it too many times then it will kind of dilute the fun after that. So, yeah. I and I have read so much fan fiction about that. I just <laughs> I've I've learned a lot of uh, weird stuff through fan fiction. Um, you know, sexual stuff. Um, I've read quite a few BDSM <laughs> fic. Let's just say it like that. Um, and I, please don't look up what ABO means. I say as I, yeah, don't look it up. If you're going to look it up, uh, like, you know, be warned. I have, uh, I have read, unfortunately, I have read quite a few of those. Um, I have read uh, Mpreg. Yeah, I am a disgusting kinky person, apparently. Um, but sometimes, sometimes those fan fictions that are kind of gross in that way are actually the ones that have the best characterization of the characters, like the best writing. Some of these fan fiction writers are actually really talented writers. And I don't know if the, if the good writing can, is, um, can excuse it, but uh, I don't know, maybe, maybe it's because it takes quite a bit of skill to be able to write sex scenes. Um, or like you have to really go into the psychology of the characters in order to go through pretty weird situations with the characters, you know? Because you don't really have um, a template, especially with, with LGBTQ characters. Like, fan fiction writers have made their own templates. Um, for how, how such a relationship would go about. Um, so, I mean, I, I will never... These are fantasy kinds of relationships. But it's not because of the sex that I am reading it. I actually kind of get icky by reading those kinds of um, fan fiction because so for me it's not that's not what I'm looking for in fan fiction what I'm looking for is like deep character dives into the emotions and the deepest deepest hopes and, and dreams of, of the characters and the character development and so my favorite kinds of yeah, fan fiction is uh, hurt comfort um, where basically, well, a character gets hurt or, or feels bad and then gets comforted by another character. That's, that's pretty nice when you're feeling really sad. And, uh, because, like, uh, it feels comforting to you too, you know? And I also like uh, pining, because I like being frustrated with the characters. Like, you know, why can't these two just talk? Why can't they communicate and they just are hiding their deepest feelings for each other for like ages and ages and ages and they are suffering because of that. I like I like to see the characters suffer and um, yeah. Sorry guys if you've come all the way through first one, two and now three to hear me talk about my fan fiction preferences but uh, that's why only the real ones are here now this point I would say um, hmm. if this Tokyo well that's maybe Tokyo in like the 
80s or something. Okay. Hmm, this one is difficult. preferences. It's not, my perfection preferences is not any kind of smut in particular. Um, it's mostly, um, yeah, I do like sharing a bed um, trope because they're like so awkward when they don't know what to do. It's like they, they a trope that I like is that uh, John Watson and Sherlock Holmes are forced to book um, um they, they, they go on some, like a case and then they're stranded in the middle of nowhere and the only hotel in town has only one room and they have to share a bed and like the awkwardness that ensues is pretty funny to me um i also like um fake dates like they pretend that they are in love like that they are together in for a case, um, but like secretly they are in love with each other, and lo like dealing with that kind of ridiculousness is um, quite funny. But it's also because they're always um, they're always mistaken for a couple anyway, uh, so it's like not out of out of character that that's just something that they would do. You know, um, but the series kind of messed up. Uh, uh, the, the series four basically messed up the entire uh, show of Sherlock for everybody, um, and and like destroyed all. There was no good writing. It was all really bad. Um, and also no John Locke, right? So that was disappointing. I was part of what, what was called the John Locke conspiracy, TJLC, uh, which was a group of mostly girls, non-binary people. Mostly girls um, on the internet. Oh no! Oh well, that's the butterfly. Um, there was a group of mostly girls on the internet that uh, wanted, that thought, and were quite positively certain that John Watson and Sherlock Holmes would get together in BBC Sherlock. But they thought that they would get together in uh, season four, which is absolutely not at all what happened and okay we call ourselves a conspiracy but it wasn't we weren't delusional like we were seeing there were many clues like the whole thing did not make sense unless you thought that they were together which I know that is debatable for certain people but the people that it's debatable to have not watched a show. Like, if you watch a show and have an open mind to the possibility of uh, uh, Sherlock and Watson being gay, then, and, and you know, uh, watching it with that kind of lens, then you will see it. Like, definitely. The amount of times that the sexuality of these characters is alluded to is ridiculous. Uh, let's just say that. Um, there is discussion of uh, boyfriends, there is discussion of, um, you know, being partners. Um, there is discussion of uh, if they were to share a bedroom. Um, just in the first episode, like I watched the first episode and I was like, what? Excuse me, like this is... This is gay, you know. Um, 
um, and if, even if you think that it's unrequited, maybe at the beginning, um, <laughs> it, like this show makes no sense if Sherlock Holmes and John Watson aren't gay, like for each other, of course. It makes no sense whatsoever. Um, because there's so much subtext and uh, it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. And I'm so sad that in 2017, when season four came out, that the producers of the show did not take the opportunity to truly make a groundbreaking thing by making John Watson and Sherlock Holmes like um, together for once. Like how long do we have to wait? until these old characters I mean like these are characters from before the 1900s how many years do we have to wait until they can finally be together anyway sorry for that long rant I needed to talk about something that would make me feel better um, because I, I really am feeling miserable <laughs> let's just say <sighs> okay, we're almost done. I think I'm going to have to have a lie down after this because I am pretty exhausted and it is pretty warm in here. I hope I can go to work tomorrow, actually. I wanna... Um, I did write my own fanfiction. Um, it was called Open Your Eyes. I'm pretty proud of that, actually. And my pseudonym was uh, Soft Lock. If you ever want to go on archive of, on our, of our own .com. Um, but, I mean, you won't understand it unless you have seen the show, obviously. Um, it has LGBTQ representation. <laughs> um, but yeah, so soft lock was uh, my pseudonym, and I'm still called soft lock on Tumblr. If you ever want to find my site there, actually I have like around two thousand something uh, followers. That blog was actually more successful than my actual blog. Like that was a side blog and. Um, it actually got more, more followers because I would post other people's um, fan fiction and I would post their fan art and it kind of was a community which um, I really appreciated because even though I didn't contribute with a lot of my own things, um, I felt like uh, I was part of a bigger something in the fandom. Um, there we go. Okay, so I think that we're done here. Um, maybe I'll find some more blue tack uh, on the wall. I'm going to have to like clean it up at some point. Uh, yeah, so have a great day. <laughs> Bye.